This is the XM18 Reloadable Smoke. It is made by Pace Defense at ReloadableShells.com. I contacted Scott Pace, the owner of the company, about six months ago, and I just texted him and I was like, hey man, can you send me one of these reusable smoke because they're fucking awesome and I want to test it out. I'm going to start by explaining the canister. So there's a threaded bottom and a threaded top piece. This is pretty standard here. The bottom comes off to facilitate cleaning. And then this is a vented cap here. Inside of this, or threaded into this cap, is this little diffuse assembly. I'll, I'll explain how this works in a sec. And this M228 fuse, I think this has, normally it has 5 8 inch threading. But what, what Scott did is he removed the spent gasless fuse from these salvaged M228 fuses, and he threaded the inside of this to accommodate this device. This accommodates a small pistol primer, and you thread this cap on to hold it in place, and these are vent holes just so that this doesn't come out, the uh, ignition gases don't come out too forcefully, you know. And then this goes into this fuse head and this inserts into here. Now, this body here vents, you can see that, this little piece here vents those ignition gases and also holds a cross-matched Visco fuse, which goes in down and into the smoke composition. So I'm going to start by showing you how to arm this thing. And it is really cool. Oh, by the way, let's just review some of this stuff. So we have the fuse head and the spoon, the mousetrap spring, and the striker. Cool thing that he does is he uses a center punch on this rod this hinge rod piece here, whatever the heck that would be called. And that holds it in place. It's kind of a pain in the ass when these things slide out on you because they're easy to lose. And what I'm going to start with is adding the, installing the pistol primer. So we remove these pieces. This is, this is a little different from my normal videos because it's a easy thing to make. It's not, it's not like moderate to difficult level of work here. All right, so we load this primer in here. Like that. And then we put this cap on. We load this here. You know what? <laughs> Probably smart for me to arm this first because it can be an awkward process and I have a high probability of setting that off. So order of operations would dictate. There we go. That the spoon. One interesting thing with these spoons, you'll see that there's a smaller hole on the side that the pull ring is on, the smaller hole, larger hole is on the opposite side because the larger hole accommodates the unfolding of these, of the cotter pin ends. You'll see what I'm saying in a sec. So, if we, okay. There. So you see there's a larger hole here, and that's to allow these to, uh, you know, straighten out as it's pulled. Let's just straighten out a little easier. Anyway, so this is armed. I'm able to load this now like so. And then we're going to take this assembly here 
and just run. I'm using, this is a fast burning Canon Fuse. This is from pyrocreations.com. Uh, they have a lot of awesome fuses on their website. I like to get my fuses from there. Whoa, can't do that. Oh boy, oh boy. No, I wouldn't hear the end of it. <laughs> uh, cutting fuse with a dual bladed device. All right, single cutting edge, okay? So, <laughs> I can't do that on camera, especially when this is pretty much all I do. Um, so I have found, in my experience, I have not needed to prime the Visco fuse, right? However, it's pretty much always good to prime Visco fuses or to prime any fuses. It's just good practice. Um, he has web he has instructions on his website, which are in a PDF file, and I'm gonna just kind of mod. I'm doing showing you what I do for. Uh, what I've found to be the best way, in my opinion, to reload this stuff and how to arm this device. Um, you don't have to follow it. You can use almost any sort of primer. You can use black powder in a slurry with like 50, 50 alcohol and water. You can use potassium nitrate, sugar, and glue. You can use... Anyway, there's a list of good primer compositions on my website as well in the PDF files. So I'm going to just put a little bit of this here, kind of smear it around. I'm using nitrocellulose lacquer as a binder. You can use glue. You can use dextrin. You can use, uh, not glue, but PVA glue you can use. It's not really a big deal. Yeah, Honestly, you can even just leave it. You, you don't, I, I, I haven't had a any misfires with these things yet. So I'm going to, I just kind of prime the middle of this fuse and then I'm going to feed this through here. We're going to center that there and then we can use some painter's tape. <clears throat> I use this washi tape because it is the best, hands down best painter's tape out there. So we can cover it like this. Um, so I think in the instructions, they uh, on the PDF files on the website, they say or he says to use uh, a few grains of powder inside of this little canister. But I don't. I have not found that necessary. But yeah. So anyway, you're gonna just load it like that. I'm gonna dip these fuse ends here because they will ignite the smoke composition a lot better I'm gonna be using a colored smoke mix which I love it's a it's a yellow color <clears throat> but I just love the way the composition behaves I'm gonna show you how to load up the canister. This visco fuse is the slower end of fast burning, okay? Just so you know. I just added a little primer to the ends of these things. It doesn't need to be pretty. And honestly, it'll still ignite the composition with just the fuses. You don't need to do this. Now, let me see here. One thing that I did do to modify his design is... So, let's say here we have this fuse head here. We're going to thread that on there. And what I did is I took, this is from a silicone, yeah, cupcake liner, right? This is a silicone little, yeah, cupcake liner. I cut it along the, just outside this flat border here so that it almost looks like a doily. And then I just punched out the center here. And what I like to do is have it point this direction or this one? Yeah, in this direction. So I thread this onto this thing. Now, uh, on on his website, the instructions it, it, they, he specifies is to cover these vent holes with painter's tape. But I find that to be a little bit ghetto. So I just use a silicone piece, which seems to, uh, if it's a low temp composition like these colored smokes are with potassium chlorate, Wow, actually, that that looks great. 
I almost don't want to even push it in. But yeah, so I just use this and what happens is is it just the gas, you know, pushes it through these vent holes and it just opens up a little like valve here. And it's a little bit more it's a little bit cooler looking, more professional looking than uh just having painters tape on the top of it. All right, so we have this and now I'm going to have to load this up with some smoke composition. I'm going to compress it to around a thousand pounds with a arbor press and then I'm going to drill out a central core. So stand by one minute while I get this set up. Here is this composition. Actually, you know what? Here's an advertisement. <laughs> Okay, so now this is a three quarter inch Forzner bit. I'm just gonna go right down the center here. I'm gonna dump the excess into the bucket. So there we have that. Uh, don't be too aggressive with the drilling. Uh, this contains potassium chlorate. This composition contains potassium chlorate, and that is not, it is a sensitive oxidizer. So anyway, what you can do is just put these two, um, just put the fuse ends down here, screw it together, and then that's that. You can put a wire mesh if you want, but uh, it wasn't pretty when I just tried it. And screw it together clean it up and you're good to go. So we're gonna go test this. Cool, it's armed and ready. All right. It lasts a long time. Yeah. It's pretty compressed, but... It's really cool. If you look closely, you can see the sublimation of the dye. Yeah. Which is... Okay, goodbye. I love you.